to her now. Mama, my side is Sister Edna Oriaku. She had uh, glaucoma that had been diagnosed since 1959. That's about 63 years. And then she had surgery in one of the eyes. After a week, the eyes became entirely blind. And then she was using glasses. But at the Bayasa Crusade, after the prayer, her glasses fell down. She was looking for it. She could not find it again. And then after that, she discovered that she could see from that time till now. Let's hear from her. Praise the Lord. Amen. My name is Sister Edna Oriako. By God's grace, I am saved. I belong to Rumeme group of district churches under Pastor Williams. My district is Rumuchida District Church. By the special grace of God, when I was in TTC, 1959, I have eye problem, both eyes I cannot see. Throughout my tenure there, I was using glasses, amen. Glasses upon glasses. I want to tell you that it was not easy. I visited eye clinics one after the other, one after the other, one after the other, until a cousin of mine introduced me to Dr. Odogu. I went. He interviewed me. He searched me. I was suffering from glaucoma. He said he's going to operate my two eyes. Amen. He started with one. He started with my right hand side eye. He operated me. After one week, I went back again. As he did. My sisters and brothers, I could not see with that eye again. Up till now, my eye, it was blind, my right eye. I went to his office with my two daughters-in-law. I gripped this doctor. My second son wanted to sue him to court for blinding my eye. I said, God forbid, don't take him to court. God will help me to use the other one. Amen? And God was actually helping me. Even though I was using glasses upon glasses, since after my TTC level, I finished, I thought, and I became retired. Up to date, I am giving this testimony. I was using glasses with one eye. But the time came as God may have it. My district church pastor, Pastor Christian, he knows me. I do not fail activity on daily basis. I'm a women rep. By his grace, the last crusade that our Father in the Lord held at Bayasa, I attended. My district church location was far from me. Because of my condition, I attended the closer one. I attended day one, day two, day three, until second to the last date, my brethren, the Lord visited me. <laughs> Amen. I was using glasses. I was jotting. My father in the Lord said, stand up. He prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. At the end, he said, lay your hand where you have the problem. I used my two fingers and I put it, I laid it under my glasses on my eye. Behold, after the last prayer, I claimed it. Then we opened our eyes. As I opened my eyes, my brethren, I could not see the lens again. I said, what am I seeing? The lens is not there again. A women coordinator was by my left. 
I bent down to look for the lens. A brother by my right helped me to look for the lens. Behold, the miracle took place. God took away, God took away the lens. Praise the Lord. Up till now, I am moving. I can read with bright light. I have a giant print Bible. Uh, by God's grace, which I was not doing before. Praise the living God! Amen! God took away man-made solution that could not provide perfect solution. And now touch her, she is free. Let's listen to the next person. Praise the Lord. The person by my side is in the Bible, Samuel. He had chronic right testicular pain for six months. But after the crusades in Lagos, the pain disappeared and up to now is perfectly okay. Let's hear from him. Praise the Lord. My name is in the Bible, Samuel. I'm from my three districts and my three old group, um, Nigeria. My testimony goes like this. Since May 2021, I've been having this pain in my right testicles. I took drugs, the pain stopped, but it came back again, and it started. And I could not work very well. But as God may have it, in the um, Lagos Crusade, God healed me through the pastor, Pastor WF Kumui. Praise the Lord. Let's have the last for now. Praise the Lord. My name is Dr. John Dixon. I'm here now to present this sister, Sister Peace Jackson, who had the rheumatoid arthritis for one year. But after the Jalingo crusade, she was healed of that rheumatoid arthritis, and up to now, she has been fine. Let's hear a testimony. Children of God, pray! Sister Peace Jackson. I'm here to testify to the glory of God. By the grace of God, I'm born again. It was 2021, 3rd January. I was preparing to come back from village and I had an attack. And since then, the attack has been continued from one to another. I've been going to hospital, taking medication, doing tests, running tests of this and that. And at the end, I found out that all my body became stiff, my head, I could not turn my head, I cannot turn my hand, my leg, from my waist to my leg, I could not make use of my leg, I cannot even stand up, I can't sit down, I cannot even sit down, neither to stand, I was just lying down, this lying down is with one side, crying from morning to night, crying from night to morning, I cannot stand up to eat, I was lying down hopelessly. But my, my brothers and sister, it was the last uh, crusade as Jalingo, when our daddy in the Lord was praying at the very last day of that crusade. And then he asked to lay her hands wherever we have challenge that he uh, is going to pray. And as I raised up my I said, God, I don't know where to lay my hand because all part of my body is pain. And I asked God to lay his hand on me. As I raise up my hand, after the last amen, my brothers and sisters, all the pain vanished away. Those things I could not do again. Look at me, I can jump. Look amen. At my I, can do I say, may the name of this great God, may his name be highly glorified. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Tonight, God Almighty, through Jesus Christ, in his servant, W, wisdom, 
F, faithfulness, K, knowledge, U, understanding, M, mercy, U, unlimited, Y, yoke-breaking, I, infinity. As I bring to the podium now, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui, you are welcome, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Power for your present hour. This hour, that's your hour. Where are you? Father, we thank you for this retreat. Thank you for your people here at the Alpha location, Port Harcourt, all over Nigeria, all over Africa, beyond Africa, everywhere. We're asking, Lord, this will be the hour of power. Power for salvation. Power for healing. Power for deliverance. Power for total breakthrough. Lord, I pray, wipe the tears away. Take the sorrows away. And let the joy of the Lord be the strength of everyone in Jesus' name. Confirm it in every life. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We have come starting today for our retreat. The retreat time is a time of waiting before the Lord. We start from the morning till the evening. We are starting today. It continues tomorrow and then Saturday and Sunday and Monday. I want to plead with you. Be present in every session. The Lord will fill your cup to overflowing your life, your family, the work of your hand. Everything that concerns you will never be the same again in Jesus' name. You will go higher. You will grow greater. After this retreat, you'll find power. 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 For your hour in Jesus' name. Tonight, we're starting with the message, Christ, our Passover. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 5, reading from verse 6. It says, your glory in is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven lifteth the whole lump? Look at verse 7. In verse 7, put out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lamb, as ye are unleavened, even for even Christ. Look at this now. Here is where the topic came from. Even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Christ, your Passover, my Passover, our Passover, he has been sacrificed for us. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, therefore, because Christ has been sacrificed for us, let us keep the feast with the old without, not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I pray that the Passover that Christ himself has made for you will become effective in your life. From tonight, the power of the Lord for this present hour will work unlimited, unhindered, unrestricted in your life in Jesus' name. I thought Port Harcourt will say, Amen. Christ, our Passover. We're looking at the subject in three perspectives. Number one, 
the promise and condition of the Passover. Number two, the provision for the commonwealth of the Passover. Number three, the proclamation of covenant beyond the Passover. Let's look at the first one, the promise. The promise and condition of the Passover. Actually, as we talk about the Passover, it first took place in Exodus. Exodus chapter 12, reading from verse 12, where God himself spoke about the Passover for the children of Israel. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 12, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods, all the idols of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. God said, when he sees the blood, the blood that had been taken from the sacrifice of the lamb, he said, when I see the blood, I'll forgive your sin. I'll take away your guilt. I take away your condemnation. I'll take away your punishment. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. As we look at what God has done at that time, and is going to do for us today. There are three things we look at here under the promise. Number one, the promise of the Lord for the Passover. Number two, the preparation with no leaven before the Passover. Number three, the protection from the Lord during the Passover. Look at them one by one. Number one, the promise. God is giving you a promise. Say, God is giving me a promise. And you know, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should change his mind. As he said, and shall he not do it? He said it for them. And he did it for them. And the promise is giving you today, it will fulfill in your life in Jesus' name. The promise of the Lord for the Passover. Look at that Exodus again and look at chapter 12, verse 23. Exodus chapter 12, verse 23. And for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood upon the lintel, and on the two side post, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer, will not permit, will not allow the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. That he is for them when they sacrificed the lamb, the animal, and they took the blood as the Lord had directed, and they put upon the lintels of their houses, upon the side post of the door. Then the Lord said, the evil angel, the angel of destruction, passing through the land at that time, that that angel, once he sees the blood, he will pass over that house. Why? The reason is because all have sinned and all have come short of the glory of God. And the soul that sinneth, it shall die. But the Egyptians had sinned, the world had sinned, and the Israelites had sinned. Normally, 
even the Israelites should have died. But a lamb died on their behalf. And when they applied the blood, it showed that a lamb had been the substitute. And that death cannot take place two times on the animal, on the Israelite. That's why God said, when I see that that lamb had been sacrificed for you, and I see the sign of the blood, then I'll pass over you. Look at that in Romans chapter 3, reading from verse 23. Romans chapter 3, verse 23, For all have seen and come short of the glory of God. Then in verse 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 25, it says, Whom God has set forth to be the propitiation and the sacrifice is his blood that covers our sin, takes away our sin. And tonight, if it has not happened to you before, it will happen to you tonight. Forgiveness and freedom and then judgment will pass over you. Judgment will pass over me. Judgment will not be upon your head again. Amen. Amen. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. He tells us in John chapter 5, verse 24, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, he has eternal life, everlasting life. You'll have everlasting life. You'll have eternal life. Normally, because you have sinned, because you have been living in sin, death should have come. Eternal death. Death forever. To be in the place totally separated from God. But you turn around. You say, I trust in Christ. He died for me. He shed his blood for me. And the moment you believe, eternal death will be taken away from you. Eternal punishment will be taken away from you. And you will have everlasting life. What will you have? And he says, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. That's the promise. It will be fulfilled. What preparation do we make? What preparation do you make? Look at number two there. Number two, the preparation with no leaven before the Passover. We're looking at Exodus chapter 12, reading from verse 19. Exodus 12, verse 19. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Leaven is like what we call yeast. When you put it in the dough that you make bread with, it makes it to swell. And that leaven is likened unto sin. When it comes into life, it corrupts the life. It changes the life. It makes the life to swell up in the wrong direction. And so God said, in preparation for the angel of death, angel of judgment to pass over, you must take leaven away from your houses. Let's look at Galatians chapter 5. Reading from verse 7, Galatians 5, 
Verse 7, ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Look at verse 8. In verse 8, this persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. Verse 9, it says, a little leaven leadness the whole lamb. Now, let me explain that to you. The Lord said, take leaven away. Sweep leaven away. And that leaven is representing, symbolizing evil, sin, iniquity, transgression. Then, if somebody says, no, not necessary, leave all the leaven there and leave all the contamination there and God will still save you then the word of God says that persuasion is not of God we must take leaven away and it explains look at verse 19 in verse 19 now the works of the flesh for us to understand you know now we're not talking about bread we're talking about you we're talking about man. We're talking about man, woman, boy, girl that wants to escape judgment and he wants to come to everlasting life, eternal life, the life of God in man. And so the level we are to take away now, he refers to them as the works of the flesh, their manifest, which are these adultery. That's something to take away. Fornication. That's something to take away. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Look at verse 20. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Hatred. Variance. Emulations. Wrath. Strife. Seditions. Heresies. Verse 21. Envies. Murders. Drunkenness. Revelings and such life is saying all sin, all iniquity, all evil, all transgression, all these bad, bad things, and such life of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do presentence, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But I will inherit the kingdom of God. I will inherit the kingdom of God. By the grace of God, because of the sacrifice of Christ, you will inherit the kingdom of God. What preparation do we make? will take the leaven away. All these things that the Lord has shown us, that leaven represents, we sweep them away, we turn away from them, we repent from them. Eternal life will come to you tonight. Number three here, number three, we're looking at protection from the Lord during the Passover. Protection from the Lord during the Passover. Exodus chapter 12 verse 13. It says, And the blood shall be to you for a token, for a sign, upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. When he sees the blood, he will pass over you. When you believe on the blood of Jesus Christ that is shed on the cross of Calvary, and you said, that's for me, that's for me. I believe, I accept. When I see your face in the blood, it will pass over you. Calamity will pass over you. Destruction will pass over you. Plague will not stay, will not abide in your house in Jesus' name. The plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. No more destruction. Look up here. I said for you. Where are you? 
for you. No more destruction in Jesus' name. It will not come upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Look at Psalm 125, verse 2. Psalm 125, verse 2. At the mountains around about Jerusalem. So the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. Amen. Little amen. amen. At the mountains surround Jerusalem. The Lord wants to apply the blood of the Lamb. The blood will protect you. The blood of Jesus will protect your life. Will preserve your life. And the Lord, he'll be before you. He'll be behind you. He'll be above you. He'll be around you. And no evil will come near you anymore in Jesus' name. But, 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 you must believe in the blood of Jesus that is shed for you. And I'm going to give you a chance, as I finish the message, to believe in the blood of the Lamb. And I'm telling you, every evil sin will pass away from your life in Jesus' name. If the devil is running after you, as you say, I believe in the blood of the Lamb, that devil will stop immediately. If an evil spirit is trying to grab you and choke you, immediately you believe in the blood of Jesus, that evil spirit his hand will be cut off from your life. Free. Free. You'll be free in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 91 verse 9. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Let me explain. Let's say this a house that's habitation. But now God himself becomes your habitation. When the blood of his only begotten son, when that blood is believed and it is upon you, God is your habitation. Now tell me, if you are dwelling in God and God is your habitation, can the serpent spirit crawl in where God is? Can sickness crawl in where God is? Everything coming from the devil, everything coming from the spiritual serpent, everything coming from the paths of darkness, everything tonight gone in Jesus' name. Look at verse 10. It says, There shall no evil befall thee. Me, me. There shall no evil befall. No evil will befall you. On the road, in the way, anywhere, in the town, in the village. Because once that blood of the Lamb is applied to you, and the angels know that this blood is applied to your life, anywhere you go, you are the son of the Most High God. And because of that, no plague will come near your dwelling in Jesus' name. Verse 11, in verse 11, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Verse 12, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone there's something wonderful for the rest of your life today 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 in the beginning of a better life for everyone as you believe on the lord jesus christ and you say yes it's mine i believe christ is my passover i embrace that i believe that i accept that from today this is the beginning of a new life, of a better life, of a higher life, 
of a happier life, of a protected life in your life in Jesus' name. Now, that is the promise. Let me go to point number two now. Point number two, the provision for the commonwealth of, of the Passover. When we say commonwealth, all the people in the world, commonwealth, that believe in the Passover. Here is what is going to happen. Let me read to you here from Galatians chapter 6, verse 16. Galatians 6, verse 16. And as many as walk according to this rule, according to this rule, they believe in the blood of the Lamb. They take the leaven away from their houses. They take sin away from their life. They repent. And then they believe in what Christ had done and promised for them. And they walk like that. With the consciousness, Christ is mine. I belong to Christ. His blood has forgiven me. His blood has set me free. And they walk with that understanding. As many as walk according to this rule peace be on them peace be on you and mercy and upon the israel of god we are now the israel of god the commonwealth what happens then three things number one manna for strength from the perfect land Number two, message for sustenance in the pleasant land. Number three, marvels of salvation from the powerful Lord. A Lord is waiting for you. Look at number one, manna for strength from the perfect land. After the Lord passed over them, and they were not destroyed. They came out of the land of bondage. You will come out tonight. Bondage will go tonight. Oppression will go tonight. And then he now fed them with manna. The Lord will fill you. He will feed you spiritually. He will feed you physically. And it will feed you in every way you will not lack in your life anymore. Look at Exodus chapter 16. We're reading from verse 15. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna. For they wist not, they knew not what it was. And Moses said unto them, this is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. Manna. Everybody shout, manna. Now, look at verse 35. He gave them first day, all that week, all that month, all the months of the first year, second month, third month. Blessing is coming upon your life. Every day of your life, blessing. Every day of my life, blessing. Look at verse 35. And the children of Israel did each manna 40 years. Think about that. Until they came to a land inhabited. And they, they did each manna until they came to the borders of the land of Canaan. But if there was no Passover, the manna will not come. You couldn't jump out of Egypt without the Passover and then take manna. First of all, the Passover. And then after the Passover, the Lord does not leave you there. He now gives you manna. What's manna, by the way? Psalm 78, reading from verse 24. And had rained down manna upon them to eat, and had given them of the corn of heaven. That's it. Manna was the corn of heaven. 
Look at verse 25. In verse 25, man did eat angel's food. Man did eat angel's food. Why? Because the blood had been shed for them. They believed in the blood. And the Lord passed over them. And then after that time now, he said, I will give you a taste of heaven. You. I will give you a taste of heaven. What is she? What is he there? A taste of heaven. No sorrow in heaven. No cry in heaven. No sickness in heaven. And there is no disappointment in heaven. Your life is going to change tonight. He will give you a taste of, tell me, man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. He will do it for you. Now, we need to understand how God has now done it for us. John chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 48. I am the bread of life. Christ that came, Christ at Passover is also the bread of life. Look at verse 49. It says in verse 49, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. In verse 50, it says, this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. You will not die before your time. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Life is available for you. Verse 58. In verse 58, this is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Who is that? I said who is going to live forever. You, as you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 63, it says in verse 63, it is the spirit that quickness. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. When you believe and accept the words of Christ and you live by that word, you come to life. And that life will keep on increasing, increasing until life everlasting. Look at number two there. Number two there is the message for sustainers in the pleasant land. The message for the sustainers in the pleasant land. The pleasant land is the land the Lord is taking us to. Look at Psalm 106. I'm reading from verse 24. Psalm 106 Verse 24, yea, they despised the pleasant land. That's the land of promise. You will not despise the pleasant land. I can't hear you, amen. You know what they did? They said, we're looking for the cucumbers of Egypt. We're looking for the onions of Egypt. They said, even this manna, they need to appreciate the provision of God. They said, we don't want to go anywhere. Take us back to Egypt. You will not go back to the world. The Lord is bringing you out, out of darkness, out of captivity, out of bondage, out of evil, out of corruption, you will not go back there in Jesus' name. The pleasant land is the land of joy, of provision, of goodness. The Lord is taking us over there. Believe not his word. Verse 25, the murmured in their tents, they hearkened not unto the voice of the Lord. But now, the message that keeps us going on. And the message that sustains us. Matthew chapter 4, reading from verse 4. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, but he answered and said, It is written. That's the message 
that sustains us in the pleasant land. Whatever is written in God's book of life. Whatever is written by those prophets and by those apostles that God had said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. This message of God from his book will sustain your life. Any crossroad you find yourself, this word will sustain your life. Any danger, any temptation, any trial, this word will sustain you to the end in Jesus' name. When you are tired, it will quicken your life. When you are sick, it will heal your body. When you are sorrowful, it will bring you joy. When it appears strength is gone, New life and strength will come for you in Jesus' name. Message for sustainers in the pleasant land. Number three here. Number three, the marvels of salvation. Your life will become a marvel. People will look at you and they will say, marvelous. They look at the work of your hand, they'll say, marvelous. They look at your posture, at your joy, at your happiness. They'll say, marvelous. Brother, marvelous. Sister, marvelous. Amen. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. The marvels of salvation from the powerful Lord. Exodus chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 2. The Lord is my strength and song and is become my salvation. He is my God and I will prepare him an habitation. My father's God, I will exalt him. That's a marvelous life. He says, the Lord is now my salvation. Look at verse 6. It says in verse 6, Thy right hand, O Lord, it become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed in pieces the enemy. And then in verse 11, it says, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. And I pray the wonders of the Lord that has already started in your life will never end. Look at Acts chapter 4, reading from verse 12. It says, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And remember, is Christ our Passover. And already is sacrificed for us. His blood <clears throat> is shed for us. And we believe that. And so we have the marvels of salvation. You have the marvels of salvation. There's joy in salvation. Joy will come to you. Peace is salvation. Peace will come to you. There is happiness in salvation. Happiness will come to your life. There's forgiveness in salvation. Forgiveness will come to you. There's freedom in salvation. And freedom has come to you already. And then there's assurance in salvation. You will walk with confidence in life. You will know Christ is mine. I belong to Christ. Therefore, I have assurance. All his promises will be yes and amen in your life. In Jesus' name. We we'll come to point number three now. Point number three, the proclamation of the covenant beyond the Passover. At the point of uh, passing over, that is when the Lord said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. 
they didn't know what was still come. Look at 2 Kings chapter 23 and verse 21. And the king commanded all the people, saying, Keep the Passover unto the Lord your God, as it is written in the book of this covenant. See those two things there, Passover and then covenant. Passover, I'll pass over you. And immediately the Passover took place, then a covenant came. Three things. Number one, the promised benefits of the healing covenant. There's a healing covenant. And that covenant of healing is taking place in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Number two, the privileged believers in the holy covenant. It's a holy covenant. And God who made that covenant is holy. He will not disappoint you in Jesus' name. Number three, the present birthright in the heavenly covenant. Healing covenant, holy covenant, heavenly covenant. Number one, number one, the promised benefits in the healing covenant. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12. It says, wherefore it shall come to pass in your life. It will happen in my life. In my life. Tonight, it shall come to pass. Therefore, wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which is swear unto thy fathers. What covenant is that? Look at verse 15. In verse 15, and the Lord shall take away from from Mention your name. The Lord shall take away from, from you all sickness. Praise the Lord. Cancer will go. Blindness will vanish away. Romance or uh, 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 whatever they call it, it will vanish away from your life in Jesus' name. Five bright is going. Insanity will vanish away. And broken bones will be mended together. Arthritis will vanish away. And all those things that is walking about and trying to disturb your life. Tonight, they'll pack their load and go in Jesus' name. He said, he said, the Lord will take away all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee and but he will lay them upon them that hate thee Amen, Amen. Look at Psalm 103 Psalm 103 you will bless the Lord tonight you will give testimony tonight the joy of the Lord will drive away every sin that is evil in your life in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within, within me, bless his holy name. Look at verse 2 there. In verse 2 it says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then in verse 3, it tells us in verse 3, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. How many of your sins will he forgive? How many of your transgressions will he forgive? He forgiveth all your iniquities. How many of your diseases will he heal? Seriously, seriously. How many of your diseases will he heal tonight? 
I mean assuredly, if you are sure beyond any shadow of doubt, how many of your diseases will he take away tonight? Who oh, heals all thy diseases. And the Lord is doing it for us here. He's doing it for everyone connected with us now all over in every country in Africa. Give me a good amen. In all the countries beyond Africa, say amen. You know, we had a retreat some years ago and in Canada, far away in Canada, there was a this sister, white Caucasian sister that had been married, but there was no child. But as we held the retreat, and she believed in the Lord, and she believed the prophet, the messenger of the Lord. After that retreat, she went back home, and then, lo and behold, it happened. She got pregnant, and now she delivered the child, the only child she got, miracle child. And now she's rejoicing and giving testimony and blessing the Lord with all her soul and with all her mind that now she had a living, healthy son. As it happened to her, it will happen to you. Because he, the Lord, he will renew your strength. Look at verse 4 there. In verse 4 there, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I wish I could come to you directly, personally there, and say, the Lord is talking about you. I said, the Lord is talking about you. That he redeemeth your life from destruction. Who crowneth thee? The angels can see that crown on your head. Even the enemy can see that crown on your head. The Lord has lifted you up through that Passover. You'll never come down again. Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Look at verse 5. Who satisfies thy mouth? Who satisfies thy mouth with good, good things? So that the youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. You know, when you think of what God is doing, just in the other crusade we just had now, this last, uh, last month by Elsa stage, we, you know, were in the, in the crusade, and there was this woman that brought a nephew or cousin, a boy, this boy had lost the father. The father was born deaf and dumb. Until the father died, the father remained deaf and dumb. And for this child that was born, obviously, before the father died, that child too was born. As the father was deaf and dumb, this boy was deaf and dumb from birth. And now, they came to the crusade, and the boy, now of age, and as we prayed, as we are going to pray tonight, and God answered that prayer, this prayer for you, the Lord will answer. And so, as we prayed and said the final amen, it just occurred to the sister that brought him to call his name. And he called his name. And then he turned. He was surprised. They blocked their ears. And somebody stood behind and called the name. And then he answered. Then they now faced him and pronounced one. What did he say? Two. What did he say? Three. What did he say? The Lord had healed the deaf and dumb. When they got back home, they now continue. They said, Jerry. He said, Jerry. Maya. He said, Maya. My name. He said, my name is. He said, is. I'm telling you, God is at work. 
I said God is at work in your life. In your life. In your family. The healing covenant will produce results in your life.